Hi all, let's go over a game of Britain's top player, the UK's top player, Michael Adams. This was at the Gibraltar tournament earlier this year. His opponent, an international master, Julio Suarez Gomez. Gomez. So e4 for Michael Adams, e6, a French defence. Adams is a, known to be a specialist in the Tarash variation against the French defence. And actually this game features something quite novel. This is very trodden territory indeed so far. So after C takes bishop c4, white tries to recollect the pawn. And at this juncture, after knight takes, there's either knight takes or queen takes. We have the slightly more exciting knight takes, keeping the queens on and threatening the lethal bishop b5. So the, the normal looking knight f6 fells miserably to bishop b5 here. Hence a6. Now bishop f4, this is the novel point. Usually players with white castle. And this is a pretty standard position where black gets hold of that dark square diagonal. And white's thought to have a small edge. And Adams have, has played this position many times, often with, uh, with great success, because he, he is known as one of the top scorers in this whole variation. So this is a slightly novel treatment, slightly rarer move, bishop f4. And now actually bishop d6 would be a problem because of knight takes e6 where the knight's protecting the bishop. So for example here queen takes and then knight takes f4. So there are some points to it discouraging any bishop d6. Uh, here we have knight e7. Bishop c5 has been seen before. This is uh, maybe a little bit of improvisation knight e7. We have now queen d2, and white actually prepares the exciting castling queen side. After knight g6, Adams is actually prepared to let his bishop go. He just castles queen side. Now, maybe it seems, from an engine point of view, uh, it seems as though this might be possible to take, even though it looks extremely scary. Where black hasn't got any developed pieces really, and white's threatening knight takes e6. But apparently, bishop d6. For example, this should be okay for black. This should be an even position, it seems, uh, technically. But uh, maybe a bit scared. Uh, black didn't take on f4. Maybe he thought it was prepared line, a prepared line or something. Bishop c5 was played. We have now the bishop dropping back, and so the novelty move, kind of novelty move, has done its job. It's interfered with black's standard-looking plans. And in fact, we have now, you know, with white casting queenside as well. Very interesting scenario. B5 does have some downsides to it, because after bishop e2, the bishop can come and now threaten that rook. And you can imagine rook a7 as even bishop b8. So this x-ray of the bishops has to be addressed, potentially. Uh, but there is also bishop b7, though. So bear that in mind. But first here, instead of bishop f3, a very clever move indeed is played queen c3 and the intention is about to be revealed here uh, the first point is uh, well the, the bishop is attacked and um, we have queen a7 now bishop f3 bishop b7 and here one of the hidden points about the queen on c3 is revealed in dramatic fashion. White play. Can you see the amazing move played in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video, starting from now. Okay, a very powerful forcing move. Knight takes e6, threatening mate on g7. Black takes that. And now rook d7, double attacking b7 and g7, threatening mate again. Black tries here bishop d4. An alternative is interesting to analyse for a moment. Rook f7, when maybe the absolute strongest is just to support the rook. Yeah, maybe this is the absolute strongest. Because uh, it's very, very dangerous now. For example, this rook takes this position is going to be a, a big edge for white even if uh, the black queen is taking on g2. Uh, so keeping the pressure here is, is good, but also simply rook takes b7 
and taking there is going to be a, a big advantage for white as well. So yeah, this knight takes e6 is causing all sorts of problems here. So we see black playing bishop d4 to try and address the g7 issue. Rook takes d4. So Adams now has a commanding position with a better pawn structure and still the bishop pair. Bishop takes, that's removed though, and doubles white's pawns. Is there any hope for black here? Queen e3 probing this pawn now. And now after queen f7, rook d6, double attacking a6 and e6, e5. So yet another pawn is taken. So it's now two pawns up and black's pawns are also isolated. This isn't a good advert for playing the French defence so far. Rook takes, rook takes, a3. And now b4, which goes into another powerful move. Queen e4, double attacking a8 and b4. Whoops. It's three pawns biting the dust. And another one bites the dust. So queen a2 is played. It looks dangerous, but I guess the defensive move played now, which is neat and elegant. If I give you five seconds here, white play. Okay. Just c3, just making way for queen b1. That powerful centralized queen can act offensively here. Check queen b1 and black gets desperate now. It is a pretty bad position. If he goes back, white's just going to play something like rook d1, let this double pawn go, and queen d3 with a big advantage. But black tries his luck here with rook takes, which is uh, pretty optimistic uh, because actually these checks uh, are running out here. They're going to be running out. Say check here, then maybe queen d3, for example. So black resigned in this position. I thought it was a novel bishop f4 move and I wanted to check out how the UK number one uh, got a very very good score in the end seven and a half so among the leaders it was only the, the tie break system which had to decide between them. So very interesting games from Gibraltar to look at. I hope you enjoyed this one. Comments, questions, likes, shares appreciated. Thanks very much.